four days away from what's going to be a very long, stressful exam period. But saying that, you've got to maintain a steady pace and take things one step at a time. Otherwise, you're just going to burn yourself out. All right. You don't want to do that. And, you know, this channel, man, is there to help you. Um, give you a bit of help. Everyone needs a bit of help. And today's help, you can say, is on edema, right? Now, what I want to do here is I want to talk you through my perspective in the form of a floor diagram. How I basically see is a good way to visualize. I said that word right. Uh, visualize what's the best way of thinking about edema, all right? give you a good overview now i think a good place to start is thinking about the idea of pitting and unpitting now with these two ideas hopefully you already know pitting is to do with um when you palpate uh the limb there is going to be a depression in the skin and uh, non-pitting is there isn't going to be any depression basically but why is that the reason is is because if we focus on the interstitial in the interstitium all right you have tissue and you have interstitial space but Alongside that, you have something that drains the tissue fluid. And what is that? That's the lymphatic system. Okay. If there is a blockage of any kind in the lymphatic system, you're going to get non-pitting. So let me show you. If we get edema in the interstitial space and the lymphatic system is unable to drain this fluid then we are going to get a buildup of fluid and so therefore when we palpate such limb there will not be a depression because there's a lack of drainage basically if you see there is drainage sorry if you see there's pitting you can assume there is drainage there is no problem with the lymphatic system there is another problem all right so that is something that I wanted to get out of the way. Now, let's start with pitting, all right? Now, pitting, what are the main reasons for pitting edema? What I want you to think of is always transudate. What is transudate? Transudate is non-inflammatory edema. In, this is edema that has nothing to do with inflammation inflammation has all to do with exudate but we'll come back to that so what are factors that could lead to edema but has nothing to do with inflammation i.e vasodilation i.e um, increased permeability well the two things is such okay Increase hydrostatic pressure, decrease osmotic pressure. Okay. Now, I've drawn a Venn diagram because one thing here overlaps. Let's start with increased hydrostatic pressure. Now, what does this mean? Increased hydrostatic pressure means there's an increase in the ratio, in the fluid compared to the you can say cellular factors the proteins okay what causes this increase in fluid all right three things number one you could think of right-sided heart failure right there's going to be an increased congestion this backup of fluid will cause increased volume which will cause increased edema number two Increased salt diet, all right? If there's an increased salt intake, what's that going to mean? 
increase water retention. What does that mean? Increase the edema. Thirdly, now I've drawn the kidney within the Venn diagram center because you can think of two things. So the thing that relates to hydrostatic pressure, sorry, let me just get the pen. What relates here is sodium retention now this is things like you know renal failure and less gfr maybe hmm, maybe something like um cushing's cushing's you're going to get an increase in um sodium retention aren't you Okay, now what's the, what is the opposite here? So what the, what the kidney can do to cause less oncotic pressure is, can you guess? Nephrotic syndrome, nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome, all right. What's going to happen in nephrotic syndrome you're going to get an increase in the protein urea you're going to get a decreased protein content within the blood and so because of that there will be less oncotic pressure but yeah let's just finish off the final component within an increase in hydrostatic pressure which is um sorry did i mention right-sided heart failure yeah so just summarizing this Right-sided heart failure, increased salt content in the diet or an increase in the salt retention due to renal failure or Cushing's disease. Now, moving on to decrease oncotic pressure. Like I said, you got nephrotic syndrome or you got liver cirrhosis. Yeah, your liver is responsible for certain protein production, including albumin. All right. If this process is defective, you're going to have less proteins, i.e. less oncotic pressure, okay, causing edema. Now, why have I shown money and less peas, all right? Basically, transudate, what is transudate? Transudate is basically this tissue fluid in which you have less protein content, less peas, less protein content, all right? Just a way of... Uh, making things a bit more imaginative so when you think of transudate think of a tissue fluid which have a less protein content now that should make sense because this is not an inflammatory condition there is no there is no increased permeability there is no vasodilation right so you won't expect expect proteins to be able to squeeze out there's no spaces yeah everything's tight right um and if you wanted to make things a bit more um, a different way to categorize hydrostatic pressure increase you could think of arterial factors and venous factors venous factors could be portal vein obstruction which you can interpret as liver cirrhosis and DVT, deep vein thrombosis. These things are going to cause obstruction, cause an increase, uh, intravascular volume, causing edema, arterial problems, yeah, right-sided heart failure, like I mentioned, and salt retention or nephrotic syndrome, okay? It can be salt or it can be protein retention, i.e. nephrotic syndrome. Um, so yeah, transudate, which is a pitting edema, is all about increased hydrostatic pressure, decreased oncotic pressure due to these various reasons. Now, if you're still wondering why does transudate cause pitting edema? Basically, my idea 
which isn't verified, all right? But how I see this is because if there's no inflammatory reason, if there's no infection, there's no uh, pathogenic process going on here, then I don't think, I think that's the reason why the lymph vessels are working correctly because, because there's no pathogenic involvement. This, I think, is the reason why the lymph vessels are good, yeah? They haven't been touched. There's no pathogen that's entered the body. There's no inflammation that's gone on. There's no likelihood of damage to the lymph vessels. However, let's talk about non-pitting, all right? Now, when I say non-pitting, I want you to think of exudate. And when I say exudate, I want you to think of increased permeability or inflammation. Now, like I mentioned here, why there is no damage to the lymph vessels, here, my theory, which is not verified, <laughs> my theory in which why these lymph vessels are damaged is because there must be some pathogenetic factor and the reason there's a pathogenetic factor is guess what there's inflammation all right okay now increase inflammation increase permeability what's that going to cause there's going to be there's going to be an increase in the protein deposition within the tissue spaces, all right? That's why I put lots of peas, lots of protein. Lots of protein is able to be squeezed out because of these spaces. Increase permeability, increase um, inflammation, all right? So... Obviously, I don't need to give you uh, what things can cause increased inflammation, right? Just think of any inflammatory process, autoimmune, whatever. That's going to cause an increase in the inflammation, all right? And yeah, I think that is all. That's my way of thinking of things. It's a pretty good overview of trying to wrap your head around edema and yeah i'm gonna leave it there hope it made sense all right and hope you enjoyed thank you